Here is a 2024 Toyota Camry LE. This is the base trim. So when you're looking for a family-oriented vehicle, it's not gonna have the performance style on the exterior. You'll have to go up to the SE. You can option an XP package, which will make it look more dynamic, or simply go up to the XSE to get the V6 engine. TRD will make it more athletic and also lowering the ride. I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides. 2025, we're getting a full refresh. So the styling here, it's still going to be different from the LE to the SE, starting with the grill. We're gonna have vertical bars. The SE is going to get the honeycomb. Add the XP package, gloss black elements, by combination LED headlights and daytime runnings. That's standard. So when you're thinking about a vehicle that's in the mid $20,000 price point, it's really hard to get that with clearance at five inches and great MPGs because you're getting 28 MPGs to the city and 39 MPGs for the highway out of this 2.5 liter four cylinder. It's pumping out 203 horsepower. So it's not bad for the everyday drive and 184 pound-feet of torque paired to an eight-speed automatic transmission which everybody loves because it's not a CVT with these 17 inch aluminum alloy wheels go up to the SE you can get 19 inch when you get the XP package you can get a special KMC gloss black alloy wheels with the red brake calipers the TRD and you'll also receive a sport tune suspension here you're getting a McPherson strut independent suspension and a multi-link rear suspension. So dynamically, you can still do maneuverability. Zero to 60 is gonna be around eight seconds, but that's pretty much where everybody is with traffic. And for a vehicle that's 192-ish inches long, it's still a midsize, but it's practical. And when you're going LE instead of SE, you're really looking to get the most bang for your buck. And I think they're doing a pretty decent job adding the chrome elements across the side view windows. The side skirt is gonna be more contemporary. It keeps the same styling as the base Lexus ES. Standard LED tail lights. The SE will add a trunk lit spoiler. Get the XP package. That's what I would recommend. It's gonna get blacked out badging and you'll get the dual exhaust. That's gonna be standard when you get into the SE. The TRD will get dual exhaust side by side, and it's gonna look more aggressive. It's also gonna have a cat back exhaust. You're not getting any front or rear parking sensors. You're getting a reverse camera standard. The trunk lid, you'll have to use the key fob or the actual key to go inside. 15.1 cubic feet with the bag holders on the side. Split fold the rear bench in the back at a 60-40 split. But before we look at that, underneath gets a spare tire with the jack. And now because I'm tall, we're gonna just push this through so you can see the cargo capacity maxed out. Let's go inside and start up this 2.5 liter so you can hear that exhaust now. power seat adjustment for the driver with the cloth seat six-way manual adjustment for the passenger. Headroom and leg room. We have another passenger. That way you can see foot and leg space for the front. It is more driver focused with a seven inch multimedia six speaker setup to apple carplay android auto sirius xm am fm streaming bluetooth audio and when you put it into reverse you get the lines that do not move or expand when you turn the wheel dual climate control settings is standard and you have the aluminum look that goes around the air vents with the satin aluminum and here you'll have your USB and 12 volts area that you could put a phone or a QI wireless charger as you go up the tier with a hidden storage compartment. Soft tech around the gear lever with eco, normal, and sport. It's going to be more sporty. That opens up to a deep storage pocket with two USB ports. The steering wheel is three spoke, multi function, no paddle shifts. 4.2 TFT display that can go through an array of information, including settings or any different messages for the driver. And you get a little storage pocket here for the driver. The door panels integrate into the dash and it's going to be more sporty pretty much everywhere with the satin aluminum that runs across the top tier. Storage is going to be about two beverages, no panel or moonroof, 
and no auto dimming rear view mirror. Headroom for the back seat and leg room. There's no storage beyond the driver's seat. The passenger gets a storage pocket and you get a storage tray. The floor is not completely flat with armrests and cup holders. The door is going to have the same material, so it's going to be easy to clean because of the material that is found. Storage pocket with about two beverage holders carved out. Sliding into the center, the rails are pushed up enough. If somebody has the seat back, it's gonna be a little bit tight. Button shoulder space will also be shared and headroom sitting into the center. It's gonna be a little bit more tight because you sit up more in the center. 203 horsepower, no sport tuned suspension, but she's still a playful vehicle with 184 pound feet of torque. Eight speed automatic transmission, everybody loves this. No CVT, this is not a hybrid. You don't have to worry, but you're getting near hybrid MPGs out of this four cylinder. So it's exciting because this is the base trim and you still have somewhat performance. And look at this, we're gonna have to merge in, but look what I mean by that. Well, I'm gonna slow down because this Honda Accord, he has a sport which is a 2.0 liter, it's gonna be a little bit faster than this car. It's gonna take me to some pros and cons. When you get into the LE trim, what I dislike right off the bat or a con is you're losing a lot of the styling elements on the exterior. The pro, you're getting a better drive because you have smaller wheels, no sport tuned suspension, and the brakes are good enough. It fits the car, around 180 feet, stopping 70 to zero. Turn radius at a stop point, about two-ish lanes. Safety features is definitely a pro, even on the LE trim. Some other pros about it is the seats are gonna be a little bit more soft with the cushion because it's the cloth, it's not the soft tech, which will absorb some more heat. Here, they're gonna breathe a little bit more so. No standard heated seats for the LE trim, but standard power seat adjustment for the driver, which is always a pro. And also, dual climate control. You're not gonna get that in the TRD, which is nearly $10,000 more than this. I understand you're getting a V6, which for 2025, not even have a V6. So that's kind of the sweet spot. One of my favorite variants, but if you're looking for something that sips fuel and it's a family sedan, non-hybrid, you wanna go this way. Some other cons about the vehicle is the trunk. There's no quick release. You have to use the key fob or the actual key to open it up, in which this can be a little bit more time consuming because say you have something for bags, it's obviously not a kick to open. We're not going to the higher trims. It's just, it would be easier with a quick release. We do receive armrest on the base trim. You're not gonna get that on the TRD. So again, a lot of the standard amenities that you get here is actually better than most of these standard amenities that you would get on that vehicle. And it's not that wide of a vehicle, so for everyday use and practicality, you can do any type of maneuverability. The length, around 192 inches, so it is a little bit longer, but you're getting the leg and headroom for the back, whereas when you go into the Honda Accord, you're losing headroom because of the European design. Some other cons, seven inch infotainment screen is standard. I'm not a huge fan of the way the layout is. It makes me feel like I'm in a taxi cab the way it's set up. The gloss black elements are kind of all over the place, which leaves fingerprints in the way that it is stationed. It pivots more forward, which with this windscreen, sunlight can reflect off of it in different angles, making it a little bit harder to drive. And the big con is this is a carryover. I would have liked to see some little changes. I understand that we're getting a full refresh for 2025, just would make this a little bit more desirable because the gauge cluster, it's been the same for a little while. And the whole setup, it does look a little bit sporty, but it is starting to age a little bit. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Check out the next video, merchandise, website, and Instagram. Leave a comment and a like. And I'd like to thank Stadium Toyota for giving us this 2024 Toyota Camry LE for our car review.